This wedding was an assignment for my Religion two class in Catholic school. This one's wife. Idiocy exposed. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. An individual called Dr. M. Bamalu, who is a Jefferson Fellow and member of the Nigerian Guild of Editors, has some observations about this one's wife's recent Nigerian tour. And once again, it's another commentator that exposes her idiocy. He writes, From May the 10th to the 13th, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Prince Harry and this one's wife, came to Nigeria on a private visit, which turned out more rapturous than a state visit. They were in Abuja to promote Invictus Games, a multi-sport event that empowers in-service military members as well as veterans battling physical and mental challenges. Indeed, Abuja must have gone back to its mild, bustling nature after the visit, given that the city went agog for three days. Nigerian cultural troops danced hysterically on the first day as the duo set off their trip with a mental health summit at Lightway Academy, Abuja. The visitors themselves received the kind of welcome that mistakes Nigeria to the world as one of the happiest places on earth. On May the 11th, this one's wife spoke at a Women in Leadership event, which she co-hosted with Ngozi Konjo Iwalia. On the last day, May the 12th, Prince Harry played sitting basketball with Nigerian disabled military veterans. The Duke had visited wounded soldiers at a military hospital in Kaduna, a historic city lying 150 miles from Abuja. At the hospital, he visited six wards to meet servicemen, most of whom had been injured by Boko Haram, a terrorist group operating rampantly in the country since 1999. This one's wife says she is one of us, yet... A genealogy test several years ago confirmed that this one's wife is 43% Nigerian, for which she described Nigeria as my country. So, at the Delborough Hotel in Lagos, greeted by a gleeful crowd of mainly powerful people, i.e. not the masses, this one's wife emotionally accepted royal titles from three powerful regional traditional leaders. Amidst the pomp of the visit, this one's wife made reference to her African ancestry and took time to drape herself in some redly African attire that caused a social media buzz of business for its maker, Oreira, a clothing brand. One online media catchline noted that this one's wife visited Nigeria as a duchess and left as an African princess. Unfortunately, the visit did not see this one's wife talking about the other part of a country she has come to identify with. Remarkably, some analysts saw the visit as an occasion for Nigeria to clean itself of a sorry image implanted by the UK's Foreign Office as one of the most dangerous countries to visit in the world. As such, the visitors could have spared a minute to give economic and security hope not just felicitations, to Nigerians who are experiencing some of the toughest times in the history of the country. Information had it that they were invited to Nigeria by the country's chief of defence staff, Christopher Musa, who is the highest-ranking military official. So the occasion should have addressed Nigeria's security challenges, since the visitors met with servicemen injured on the front lines, while battling insecurity that has crippled Nigeria's economy, stability and unity on all fronts. Did the pageantry of the visit merely represent today's Nigeria, suffering and smiling? Was it a metaphor for the parlous state of Nigeria's military, represented by a disabled military outfit in the face of daunting security challenges, occasioned by daring terrorists who curiously have access to much of Western-made weaponry, intelligence and combat artistry. Many have viewed insurgency in sub-Saharan Africa in close association with foreign interests in the region. 
resource-rich countries in Africa, especially those with interests from the United States, the United Kingdom, Russia and China, face multiple challenges. Why is it so, and how can we explain the many security pacts with foreign powers that hardly scratch the problems? The point is, the glamour of the event appeared to be a distraction from the real issues. Instead, the visitors linked their host to a partnership with their Archwell Foundation and the Gianco Foundation to provide school supplies such as menstrual products. Is it another metaphor for a country bleeding profusely from regular economic hemorrhage due to a natural tendency to poor policy, some of which are foreign-induced? The three leaders were brought together by the event, yet their tribesmen have been locked in serial bitter fights that have upended progress and good governance in Nigeria for over 60 years. This one's wife said nothing about this, as she tended to be teary at the rather perfunctory title bequeathals. If she were from Nigeria to any degree, she would have said much else about Nigeria's political, social and economic troubles. While speaking about the visit to Forbes Africa, an analyst and social commentator, Damilare Asiwaju, said, It's about looking at the bigger picture, promoting social causes and impacting lives. He added, Nigeria right now is going through one of the most difficult times in history. And somewhat unfortunately, he implied that the visit was a form of social welfare engagement, necessary to alleviate the tough times. What a palliative to Nigerians, who remarkably are known to profit a lot from the country's woes through jokes, cartoons and comedy. The Duke and Duchess may have come to play into the comedy trend as the most important filler of the employment gap created by bad governance in Nigeria. Suffering and smiling. Now that's the op-ed from Dr. M. Barmalou, writing in Prime Business Africa. But it emphasises the idiocy of this one's wife once again, and something that I had mentioned during their visit. Naturally, she makes it all about her. The outfits that she wears, the gurning Richter grin, wherever she goes, finding the camera. But does she draw any attention to the woes of this country? No. Does she draw attention to what it requires? to highlight the injustices, the problems that it experiences. I detail to you, for instance, the statistics with regard to hunger within Nigeria, particularly amongst children. Was that touched upon? No. Money that could have been better spent feeding children was spent on her security, because, of course, she doesn't give a rat's ass about the children. But this commentator also recognises that it's simply a distraction having this one's wife and Harry there as they swan around, not really meeting the masses, but meeting, meeting dignitaries. It's all rather unpleasant, all rather ingratiating with one another. And the fact is that it's another missed opportunity, because this one's wife is, one, dim, and two, so self-absorbed, she wouldn't take the time to actually consider the problems that Nigeria faces and draw attention to them and start to do something about it. No, she bangs on about being 43% Nigerian, even though that's not true, for the purposes of trying to elicit a response from Nigerians and claim that she's one of them. Well, if you're one of them, this one's wife, how come you don't know anything about Nigeria and its problems? The reason being, you don't care about Nigeria. Like everything in your life, it's just a device to get to the prime aims. And whilst this particular commentator may not recognise that she is a narcissist, he certainly exposes her idiocy at once again her failure to draw attention to the problems of a country that she claims to be a descendant of. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.